what's up guys so I'm gonna go ahead and go over how to install this bi turbo um, it's kind of like a coil over um, racing suspension shock basically on your uh, Vespa this is a Vespa LX 150 this is a 2014 uh, this is my wife's Vespa so I'm gonna go ahead and go over how to take this all apart and how to install this and kind of just get a, a quick idea of how it is right now so right now the main reason I'm installing this is because when you go and you hit the brakes on the, on the scooter, it likes to dive. It likes to dive really hard and pretty much bottom out. It's very easy to bottom out and the rebounding does not really happen. So I mean, it absorbs the bumps, but it bottoms out very easily. So I'm hoping, and I mean it should, this thing should be able to dial that out and you should also be able to adjust the total overall ride height of the scooter as well. So I'm going to uh, probably start out just measuring the scooter, the overall ride height right now, just get an idea of, you know, tire to, uh, to this fender, and then we'll start taking it apart. All right, thanks guys. So stay tuned and I'll go over how to do all this. Quick is an approximate idea. I'm just gonna measure basically just to this little, um, this little plastic cover. So right here, I'm at about 13 and a quarter inches uh, right on this, so I'm just measuring it from right here. Um, you know, you can measure it from any spot if you want. Now this is on the kickstand as well. So you know, if you want to have someone hold it, that's fine, but I'm just thinking this is unsprung, you know, this is a, this doesn't have anybody's um, you know, weight on it or anything like that. So it's just kind of how it sits. So this is kind of a good rough idea of how it sits on there. So. Yep, so 13 and a quarter inches, so when I put the new one on, I'm going to try to dial it to about the same factory ride height. You know, if I care to adjust it later on, I can do so just by adjusting the uh, bottom portion of the shock. It comes with this little tool that looks like you shove in there, right? It's just basically a pin, and that's going to rotate this bottom, this bottom uh, piece. And the other thing it comes with is a big washer, so it's going to go on the top here and comes with two stickers because of course when you buy aftermarket stuff you have to have stickers that's kind of a must i think you know we all love stickers so anyways let's get down to it um first thing you're going to want to remove is this vespa cover there's just two tabs on the back side so go ahead and take your fingers pull that off this is a chromed plastic piece so just go ahead and set that to the side um also get your you know ruler or whatever you did your initial measurement width out of the way. Then what you're going to want to do is find a, a T30 Torx. So I just have this out of my little tool kit. I put that on there and we're going to go ahead and take this little cover piece off. So just loosen that up. Make sure it's clicked on. All right. Loosen it up here. Pull that off. Looks like it's uh, has two tabs up in the top here. So those two tabs are going to slide out. So anyways, this is the part where it attaches to the fork. So we're going to take that. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and thread the Torx bolt back in there. For good luck. Um, put that to the side. And now I'm going to just start taking off the wheel. For taking off your front wheel, you're going to want to start off with uh, the Allen key, the appropriate one. So this one looks like it is Let's just double check this. This is a number six millimeter socket wrench. So I'm gonna to try to take that off just by hand, see if we can do it. Yeah, so I'm gonna start that off and I'm just gonna go into a star pattern for untorquing it. And when we re-put on the wheel, we'll also go in a star pattern as well. Get a little bit more torque on there. Break this all loose. This looks like it's gonna come off pretty easily. So we're getting down to the last bolt. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just prop something underneath the front of the scooter here. So just to make sure that I have something that's gonna stabilize the front of the scooter. Now what better than doing that than a jack stand? But as we know, no one has a jack stand that small. What's the next best thing? How about a jack stand box with jack stands in it? Try that real quick because I think that'll work out just perfectly for me. Look at that. Perfect ride height. So, I mean, shoot. 
That wheel's barely off the ground. That off, we're gonna go ahead and take that last uh, bolt out of the wheel. And then we can go ahead and set the Vespa tire to the side. Now is also a very good um, time to clean up this, you know. Mine's really clean. Um, it's actually surprising. I never knew these rims were made in China. That's kind of kind of disappointing, but they are still a Piaggio um, wheel. Um, they're hub eccentric, so that means that this inside of this is machined. Is machined. Um, whoops, machined perfectly to the inside of this hub. That way, when you go ahead and put this back on, um, you know you're not really having to. You have to pick it up just a little bit, but you're not having to worry about it wobbling or being off center because it's a hub centric. So that's really nice. So let's go ahead and set that to the side. So now we have access to the front. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this sideways. And I'm going to start with a different angle and we'll start taking off that shot. All right, so I had the go big or go home mentality with the socket extension. <laughs> I probably got like a two foot one on here. But hey, sometimes, you know, it's just kind of nice to get it out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that ex socket extension on here with the six millimeter. Go ahead and turn it to loosen and I'll crack these loose. All right. I got that front one loose and then we'll go for the bottom one. So go ahead and loosen those bolts all the way out. Just gonna take those out real quick. And then we'll go to the next part. Okay, so next you gotta get to these two bolts at the top of the spring. So you're gonna go ahead and get to those, loosen them up, and the shock should come out. Now I am taking out the, uh, the top two bolts. So I got one out, going for the second one. Changed my socket extension size to a uh, smaller, socket extension because it would not fit in there so make sure you guys have a couple sizes or a couple socket extensions you could probably get in there with a really small one actually but this one worked just fine so I'm just gonna go ahead and get the last little part by hand try not to scratch any of this other stuff up while I'm doing this but all right so those are the two bolts that hold the top i would just call this a top hat um i don't know the technical name for it but i mean on like on like say a modern uh, strut type car that would usually be called the top hat so i'm going to go ahead and remove this piece now this top hat piece remove this bolt and we're going to go ahead and install that onto the new shock that and place everything back on and lock washer and nut go ahead and torque everything back down what I think that's gonna do is it's just gonna give it a firmer platform to uh, to cinch down on put this back up in here Put that on there and make sure everything lines up. Okay, so one thing that I did not notice before is there is actually a bracket up there. So that's going to get reinstalled onto that mounting location. And that what that does is it actually keeps the brake line up and out of the way. For when your cars wiggle, or for when your tires were going around, that doesn't hit the tire. All right, so I went ahead and I tightened up those bolts up there at the top. Again, that was a 14 millimeter that I used up there, and I used uh, the smaller extension this time because it was I was able to get up there. There's a bracket that also holds the brake line kind of out of the way. Basically, what it does is get up there. 
it holds the brake line out of the way for the um, for the tire so that it doesn't rub against the tire. So that's this right here. So to get the top part done, I just basically took the two bolts that the uh, Bi Turbo Shop comes with, and I'm just gonna hand thread those in there at first. Just kind of work them in. And I'm gonna go back and get my six millimeter hex. And this time I'm gonna be using it with the smaller socket. Decided to put the other one back. So this is six millimeter right there on that. And then we're just gonna go ahead and tighten these bolts up, torque them down. Bigger extension that I had may have actually helped because it tapers down it's a little bit skinnier so i'm gonna try that out see if that helps it yeah that'll it kind of lets me get in there it's not exactly straight on at all but should be able to work that in without stripping it and I think when it gets more in there, it'll be okay. All right, so once you have those installed, I'm just gonna go ahead and reinstall the front cover. Go ahead and slide those back up into their slots. Those two little pieces. So where are they? Right there. Slide that up. Gonna go ahead and reinstall the tire. So, so I can see now, feels like it's a little bit taller, possibly in the front. So I'm gonna have to kind of lift the scooter up just a tad to get this on here. I'm just lifting up the, uh, the hub a little bit here. Screws, with the bolts, the bolt hole. Make sure that you uh, have your washer on there so you don't uh, mess up the rim it all. Go ahead and thread those on there in a crisscross star-like pattern and then torque that wheel down to manufacturer recommended torque spec. So now I just want to go ahead and get a feel for how the shock feels. So the front feels a little higher right away. You can see I'm not bottoming that up at all. This has a nice amount of dampening really stiff. Um, the front of the scooter may be riding a little bit higher. So in a second here, take a ride height adjustment. Um, just kind of check on that real quick. So let's see, let's see where it's standing since it was stock. I'm gonna check that out, um, see how it feels. Gotta go ride it around, you know, get a good idea. And then I'll give you guys some more input on how to adjust the uh, dampening settings. I mean, right now it's just kind of got some, you know, quick click settings on it, which is nice. Um, it looks like it has a set screw in there. So once you find a good dampening setting that you like, you can lock that down to where no one can mess with it. Um, overall though, I think it looks, I mean, it looks really cool. So that's nice. And it feels like it's a lot, has a lot better dampening. So I'll have to ride it around. I'll let you guys know what I think.